You're watching Rich History, Priceless Future, the Tarpon of Boca Grande Pass. Renowned wildlife artist, marine biologist, and conservationist, Dr. Guy Harvey has found his own unique brand of success by leveraging his talent and passion for the sea to make impactful contributions to ocean research and education. Science has been really helpful in terms of accomplishing what I wanted to do through the art. Your knowledge of anatomy and physiology and the ecology of these animals is essential if you're going to portray the animals authentically, and that's what I strive to do. Authenticity is what I'm all about. And so um, surrealism doesn't play any part in my art. And so my scientific background has been the baseline has given me all that knowledge that I need to do anything I want with any marine species I, I choose. And tarpon, of course, are the ultimate inshore game fish. Uh, one that's a top priority, their resources, their numbers are down uh, generally throughout um, the southern U.S. Gulf of Mexico. We know that the fish travel great distances. There are other countries where they are considered an esteemed food fish. And so the more we can do to learn more about them, and uh, spread the word is for the better. Guy Harvey knows firsthand the importance of research and education in protecting the Charlotte Harbor and Boca Grande Pass fishery. You can't educate without knowledge. Um, so the research work comes first. You, you've got to generate knowledge about your subject matter, as I said earlier, um, the life histories, reproductive rates, and so on. With that knowledge, you can then educate people about the need for the third part of this, which is conservation. So we're starting at the beginning. We're putting a lot of emphasis on the research work. That leads to conservation. In the first research program of its kind in the United States, a collaborative effort between the Bonefish and Tarpon Trust and the Lemon Bay Conservancy in Inglewood, Florida, is making strides to convert an old golf course into a functioning juvenile tarpon habitat. The project is aimed at restoring and conserving this maze of creeks, ponds, and saltwater marshes, and using it as a living laboratory to study the life cycle of tarpon by tagging, DNA sampling, and tracking them. Aaron Adams, PhD, Director of Operations for Bonefish and Tarpon Trust, and Research Associate Faculty at Florida Institute of Technology, heads the study at Wildflower Preserve. If you look at aerial photos from the 1950s, this whole area was a mixture of creeks and wetlands. Um, Lemon Bay Conservancy bought what was a golf course that went bankrupt, um, has gathered some funding uh, on their own, also with uh, Southwest Florida Water Management District to restore this uh, back closer to its uh, original state. These tidal ponds in the Wildflower Preserve are vital nursery areas for tarpon in their formative years. The reason we're working on the tarpon habitat, a uh, number of reasons. Uh, one is um, they require these kind of backcountry mangrove habitats. And Florida's already uh, lost about 50% of their mangrove habitats versus, say, 100 years ago. Um, we know that since juvenile tarpon need these habitats, the loss of those habitats is going to affect the overall population. So people say, well, why should we care about tarpon? Uh, well, one reason is economics. In Charlotte Harbor, for example, just local anglers, not tourists, not guides, or any of that, just local fishermen fishing for tarpon about a three or four month season have an annual economic impact of about $110 million, just in Charlotte Harbor. To expand that around the state, um, it's certainly over a billion dollars. Sampling at Wildflower Preserve started in September 2012 and will continue monthly for a year before habitat restoration occurs. Unlike most restoration projects, we are actually getting some data before the restoration. We'll continue to get the same type of sampling once a month after the restoration. We know that juvenile tarpon use this to a certain extent now. Uh, the big question is how many should really be here if this was a healthy habitat? So we're sampling here once a month. Um, Joellen King, who's doing the research, is part of a graduate program at uh, University of Florida. Um, any tarpon that we catch, she'll measure. She'll take a fin clip from for genetics. 
uh, working with the state of Florida, we can actually do DNA fingerprinting and identify individual fish. So if we catch them again, she takes another clip. Um, we can identify those fish if they've been here. Uh, if we capture them, their survival rate, their growth rate, all those types of things. She also puts uh, small computer chips in larger fish, fish that are larger than 19 centimeters, so that uh, we can track those over time. Those little computer chips, just like the ones that you put in your, in your dogs or cats, uh, are good for the lifetime of the fish. So if we have a, a catch a tarpon at any point from now for the next, tarpon can live up to 80 years, uh, and we have a detection wand and we wand it, we can actually tell where that tarpon came from. Volunteer programs and guided tours provide a unique opportunity for the community to play a hands-on role in this important research. The fact that Lemon Bay Conservancy as a land trust is able to purchase lands like this to get the science done, our hope is that by using this, as a demonstration project, proof of concept, we can actually get uh, Charlotte County, Lee County, the state to alter the way they uh, develop uh, the coastal habitats. Not to say whether development is good or bad, but to make it so there's more responsible development. So it's very much a collaborative effort. Um, it's a type of thing that uh, it's never been done before. There's never been a juvenile tarpon habitat restoration program that has actually evaluated whether or not it works. Um, you can spend five, six hundred thousand dollars with the bulldozers in here making a new wetland, but unless you know it works, it's not really effective. So sometimes people say, wow, five, six hundred thousand dollars to restore it, a hundred, hundred thousand dollars to do the science on it over a three, four year period, it's a lot of money. When you consider that uh, the annual value of the fishery is over a hundred million dollars, that's pretty small investment. If you told me that I could go and give you $600,000 and be guaranteed a return of $110 million, I'd take you up on it. Um, so that's pretty much the situation we're in. It's just like putting money away for retirement, investing in the future. That's where we are. Stay tuned. Coming up next. This is a much bigger subject than just one fish and one ecosystem. This is about a community. It's too big to lose It's in our hands We need to keep it as it is If not better than we found it Water, water Everywhere but we know we gotta Move that 